Welcome to Explore Composites. This video is about the stuff between your vacuum pump and your part. Hoses, fittings, gauges, catch pots and connectors. For a lot of composites technologies, vacuum is an essential part of the process. There aren't really any other good ways to apply huge amounts of pressure to large irregularly shaped areas. Different processes have different requirements. For bagged wet layup, you may not need much overall vacuum, but you have to be able to regulate it. And fusion's all about vacuum, as much as possible in a lot of cases. And prepregs bring high heat to the mix, and potentially lots of extra pressure in an autoclave. So your vacuum stuff has to match your process. First though, you're gonna need a pump. Here's an article and a video about that. So, you've got a vacuum pump, you've gotta have a hose. Here are some of the most common types of hoses you'll find used in composites work. The cheapest hose is a plastic polyethylene hose typically used for vacuum infusion. It's stiff enough not to crush and flexible enough to handle. You can use it in a disposable fashion, but it can also be fit with barb fittings or compression fittings and make a more permanent option. It won't take prepreg heat, but it'll be fine up to about 150F65C or so and good enough for post curing. There's also softer Tygon type PVC hose. It's easier to handle, but it crushes easily and will choke itself off if bent around tight corners. Thick wall versions of this can be okay for wet layup and infusion, but my preference is to avoid it and stick with the polyethylene hose. Moving up to a more permanent solution, this rubber coated air hose, this one's fit with vacuum fittings instead of air fittings. It will crush if you heat it up and probably won't age gracefully, but it's a good low cost option for room temperature work. Moving up to something a little tougher and actually vacuum rated, my favorite of this kind is Gorilla brand hose. This is 500 PSI rated air hose and it's yellow, which is cool. You can either buy pre-made hoses and add fittings or have them made up at a hose shop locally to your specifications. Heat adds another level of complexity, so if you're prepreg cooking, the air hose won't cut it. The most basic type of hose for oven use would be silicone radiator hose or coolant hose. This is a silicone rubber cover with wire or fiber reinforcement. It can be made up with barb fittings, hose clamps, or you can buy it with ends already attached. This tan clear hose is AirTech Airflow cook hose. It's made for use up to 450F to 30C and it will handle low pressure autoclave use too. This hose has a metal core with a silicone rubber cover so it's nice and soft and easy to handle. This green hose is autoclave rated vacuum hose capable of handling high temperature and external pressure to about 150 psi or 10 bar. This is the low end of autoclave hoses, and you can get fancy metal ones that'll handle 1,000 PSI and 1,000 Fahrenheit, 500 C, but they're expensive. And one last note on color and service type. Try to color code your hoses to help prevent mistakes. With all these nice hoses, you're gonna need some way to connect them to each other and to your pump and bag. First, we have regular air hose fittings, which can work, but they're not great, and generally, I wouldn't recommend them. They're cheap for low vacuum wet layup work. They're probably okay, but yeah. So here we have my favorite go-to vacuum quick connect. This is a set of quarter inch ISO 7241B or Parker ISOB style fittings. These are quarter inch NPT thread. Typically they're used for hydraulics or other stuff, but they work fine for vacuum. They're available in steel, brass, and stainless steel and steel and brass are about half the price of stainless. I like brass because the reduced likelihood of rusting and corrosion when in contact with moisture, and they're still cheap. Er, seal material varies, so make sure to get seals that are rated for the temperature you're using. Also, the seals wear out and break, so if you have leakiness that you can't find, you should be suspicious of your fittings. Third, we have compression push to connect style fittings that work well with the plastic infusion type hose. These are great for inexpensive room temperature work, vacuum bagging, and you can set up your infusion catch pots with these. Finally, this is an example of 
really high vacuum fittings and these are a set of flanges with a ceiling ring compressed in between them and you find these on high vacuum pumps and vacuum systems for composites work they are total overkill you may need to use them to interface with pumps or filters so they're good to know about and for larger hoses these cam lock style connectors are a good choice they're secure and when you get ones that are rated for vacuum they work great they can be used to connect larger hoses with pumps or manifolds but you can also get larger diameter quick connect fittings but they become quite expensive manifolds are useful for connecting multiple hoses to one vacuum source sometimes a splitter will do or a three-way for connecting a large hose to smaller ones a bigger manifold like this is great they can also be mounted to a wall or a vacuum pump cart so threads pipe threads are designed to get tighter as you screw them in but they also need some thread sealant to make them fully vacuum tight both PTFE tape and liquid thread sealant work okay brass fittings are nice because they are softer and less likely to corrode get stuck together and then of course they're cheap a lot of times you'll see fittings with vacuum bag sealant wrapped around the threaded connections like most of mine this is usually done as a precaution when chasing down leaks without really knowing where they are yet you know you seal the low-hanging fruit first mine are like this it's messy it's probably not a good practice but that's how it is so you're also going to need a way to get that vacuum through the bag this here applies to wet layup and prepregs don't use these nice through bag fittings for infusion because they'll get messed up these common through bag connectors are called plates frogs sniffers vac connects pucks and probably many more things depending on where who you hang out with they're great for tidy bag wet layup and prepreg where you can place them well out of the way of the resin but you're talking about fifty dollars minimum worth of stuff here and so gooping them up with resin is super bad you also want to be sure to remove them from the bag before disposing of the film because too many of these get thrown out by mistake one more way to protect your vacuum connectors here's a piece of tube bag assembled with infusion mesh inside some sealant tape with the vac connector way out on the end it's a great way to handle situations where you don't have room for a fitting under your bag or you want to get the fitting away from the resin so you place this whole assembly on the sealant tape and the fitting hangs off the edge the infusion mesh connects the vacuum and it's just held in there with a few dots of sealant tape which keep it from sliding out it's a handy way to solve that problem and a fancier version sort of of the same thing is this patented connector made by earth and flight composites that goes through the edge of a bag at the sealant tape line finally the simplest vacuum connector of all just a hose with something wrapped around the end and connected to the vacuum either ideally with a quick connect and a catch pot and some hose or just right into the pump which I don't recommend this is just some infusion hose with some mesh taped on the end to cover the end of the hose breather fabric would work okay too don't just jam a hose without some distribution medium over the end under the bag because the bag will suck into the end of the hose and pop it or it will suck up resin and just choke off the flow so whatever you wrap around make sure you use enough to keep that from happening and also be careful because if you lay this on a part it will print itself into your part so you have to know how much vacuum you've got or how much air is not in your bag for this a gauge is key gauges come in a wide variety of types and price points you should probably start with an analog gauge they're cheap they give you a pretty good idea what's up they can be hooked up to pumps catch pots and manifolds because you can afford a couple of them it gives you an idea of how your vacuum system is working the oil filled ones are ideal this is a standard digital gauge that works pretty well as an upgrade from a dial type analog gauge it reads vacuum in inches of mercury relative to the ambient atmospheric pressure so you'll get somewhat different readings depending on the weather seeing the numbers to a decimal place or two is really helpful and it makes quality control measures easier to implement this GDH 200 is 
probably my favorite. It's a low end absolute gauge. It reads vacuum relative to absolute pressure. So it's not swayed by whatever's going on in the atmosphere. This one reads in millibar, which is one thousandth of an atmosphere. And zero millibar here is equal to full vacuum, no air. When you use this kind of gauge, the best you can do is get down to zero. So as your bag gets better, it's like a countdown. The resolution is much better too, so you can get a great feel for infusion drop tests or your efforts to find that last leak on a cook bag. But at about $300 US or so, uh, it's not cheap, but totally worth it if you routinely put thousands of dollars worth of material or labor under vacuum bags. And one more thing to look at here is a vacuum regulator used to dial back your vacuum level. This is really useful for bag wet layup where you want to limit resin bleed and in some cases for infusion too. Ideally you have a gauge with this um, so that you can see where you are as you adjust the pressure vacuum. And this little double ended fitting is just to show sometimes you need ways to flip the fitting around. So if you want to insert a gauge, disconnect something, check, you might need a way to flip from male to female. And so that's what this is for. You can make them up in any configuration to solve that problem. And finally, catch pots. If you're doing bag wet layup, but especially in fusion, you need to have a catch pot between your bag and your pump. Or else you can suck resin into your pump and it becomes an X vacuum pump. Here's a catch pot made from paint pressure pot. This one has gauge and a small regulator on it. This came with a used vacuum pump that I bought. And I don't suggest you buy a fully assembled version like this if you want to save money. Any paint pressure pot will do as long as the gasket is in good shape and you can put a plastic paint pot inside to catch any resin that goes in. So, there's more than you want to know about vacuum stuff. It's important to get it right, and I'm sure there are many better ways to do it than I've shown here. If you know some, I'd love to learn too, so please uh, leave a comment or get in touch with me and let me know. And please check out the accompanying article and many others at exploreComposites.com. Links can be found in the video description. And thanks for checking it out.